Well, hello again. So this rather unusual looking uh, structure uh, was built by a former uh, student who's now graduated. Uh, this was a prototype. Uh, he later went on to do a much smaller uh, device, <coughs> which I've got. Uh, but uh, I thought it'd be nice to go back to this just to do some very rough uh, tests on on the, some servos again. And what this, how this works is it can uh, move in two degrees of freedom. Uh, there's a motor at the back with an uh, incremental encoder, a quad, quad encoder, and one here. So that this bit here at the end can move that away and the whole thing tilts in the other direction. And so it's got two servos, uh, and each one is controlled. Uh, that one, I had to tape that a bit because it can short against the metal here. Uh, there's one there, uh, and there's another one here for this motor. So it's got two uh, servos, and I've got another one, another um, ESP32 here, so that's three ESP32s in total. This one, that one, and that one. And this one here uh, is uh, set to have a, to be a Kalman filter, and it's uh, got a sensor, the uh, 6050, which you've seen before, which detects the pitch and the, um, the pitch and the roll of uh, this um, device, which is, appears in a lot of mobile devices. Uh, this circuit here is just a DC-DC converter to get from 9 volts down to uh, 5 volts for the for this because I'm running it off a battery. So what I'm going to do is I have a Kalman filter here for the for both pitch and roll and I'm going to send it wirelessly using ESP now to both of these. And uh, the tutorial for doing this is on the uh, random nerd tutorials. Uh, it says the tutorial shows how to send data from one ESP32 to multiple ESP32s or ESP8266. And uh, the method is actually relatively straightforward if you look at it. The first thing you have to do is you have to, and your receiver ones, of which I've only got two, of course, this one's got an example with three, you have to find the MAC addresses of each of these. That's the first thing. That's very easy to do. Very simple program you run and uh, you can find that, and I've done that before. Uh, and this is your transmitter one. So this one will be my common filter and estimator of the uh, pitch and the roll. And it's going to send a set point to this one and that one so that it's going to follow the uh, the movements of the 6050. If you look um, at the actual program itself, I'll just put on my glasses here. You'll see that you uh, have to put the MAC addresses here, you define them. Uh, and I've got one for roll, first one, and I've got one for pitch. And uh, the details, of course, are in that tutorial, but I define a structure, uh, it's got struct message, and it's got a, it contains a, the pitch and the roll, two floats. I could actually make it integer and it might actually be faster I'm thinking but at the moment I'm making it uh, floats and then I create a uh, with that uh, format of structure I create a structure called my data and then what you have to do you have to um, uh, send the, um, the the MAC addresses together in, in a string and uh, a, few, a few other things you have to do um, here I've got the common filter and I get this uh, whole thing running at 100 hertz sampling rate. That's to say the transmitter side is running at 100 hertz because it's um, so the common filter is not super fast by any means, but it's only been used as a set point. Um, that's the this is the common filter part. So there's actually two common filters. There's a common filter for the uh, pitch. And there's a common filter for the roll. There's a common filter for the pitch. And there's one for the roll. Okay, more or less the same with different inputs and slightly different equations. And uh, I just want to show you the basic um, idea of this. It's um, a bit Heath Robinson, as you can imagine. I'll turn it on. And uh, it's not. Uh... So as I move this that's it pitching and I can 
that's it roll uh, sorry that that's it uh, rolling yeah that way and I can pitch and roll now so obviously I've had a better um, receiver in the sense of mechanics I can do could do some some very interesting things with this on a platform uh, it's uh, not got a, it's got a slight offset so I, uh, I haven't got a trim for both unfortunately I can do one of them I can adjust the um, you know, uh, uh, I can adjust the um, uh, roll uh, with another with this um, quarter gem coder over there, uh, but it hasn't got a zeroing mechanism either, so it doesn't really know where it is when you switch it on. Um, so it, you know it, w it needs to know where zero is for horizontal. Otherwise, it takes its reference as to wherever it is when you switch it on, uh, which isn't very good. It's just a very preliminary thing. You can get the basic idea that it's sending that data wirelessly. This is battery operated, so I'm not. You see, it's not connected at all to the receiver. And so I'm over here, and I'm, I'm controlling this thing. So that could be a big platform, for example, that I'm working. Or I, indeed, I could put this um, 6050 underneath the platform and do some kind of stabilized platform. Uh, which is another approach, but it, it needs a little bit more than this because uh, you kind of when you when you attach the sensor to the platform part, it changes things again. You have to do another loop around there. Okay, so that's the basic idea of that. I just wanted to show you. That, I mean, the servos on the on the individual motors are running very at 10 kilohertz sampling rate, but they're reasonably fast. You can see me moving it there. It's not, you know, it's quite an interesting idea for the mechanics to be a little bit better. I'll just move that around. Uh, one thing I discovered is that um, you, you can't really, in some of these ESP32 boards, you can't um, run the encoders off the power supplies when you, you know, from the from the USB. Uh, so I had to use um, DC to DC converters, which I bought. It was very cheap at um, uh, AliExpress. It's about one New Zealand dollar each, incredibly cheap. And uh, one of these will power both the uh, both the ESPs. It's not connected to the USB at the moment. It's independent of that. So there it is again. Now I want to show you something else, which I just bought, and I'll get. It in a minute with that one, so I'll just cut to it. So, this is a little bit more difficult to see, but this I bought on AliExpress as well. It's got two, um, it's, it's one of these things you put on, put a camera on. My camera is just a big nut because I don't have a, a GoPro camera, so it's, it's something to give a bit of mass. And you see, it's got two. Um, well, brushless DC motors, AC motors, if you like. It's, it actually comes with a circuit board. And the idea is, when this thing is in the air, as everything, when it tilts, or when you know, when it pitches or rolls, the um, camera will still be facing directly downwards. So I'll just uh, plug it in. I've got a battery here. I'll, It'll it'll run off nine volts. It's supposed to run off twelve, but uh, it will run off nine. So, here it goes. Oh, that's, you can feel the servo action. So as I move it, you see it stays in the one position. So that's a bit like the another project that one of the students did of a camera stabilized platform for a camera. Um, this is a beautiful piece of engineering really for the cost it uh, sells for about uh, 30 40 US, uh, US dollars really the whole thing you can see it's staying horizontally as I move this there's a little bit of vibration when I touch it of course you can't sense that so as I'm moving it around it's staying in the same position Likewise, imagine this thing flying and it's staying perfectly stable. Now, if we have a closer look at it. I'm going to turn it off now. 
uh, you'll see that uh, down here on the bottom uh, is 60-50 uh, or less. That's the uh, same one that I'm using. Oops. It's not. I think it's a similar board. It's not quite the same. They probably made their own little board up, but it's. I think it's, uh, there's a suggested one in the data sheet. This is the one I'm using over here for the Kalman filter, um, which is slightly bigger. Uh, so the um, that's a little bit of demonstration of what you can do when you go to AC motors. You can compact things down. Um, of course, these aren't very powerful motors, but are quite adequate to to do um, uh, to hold this small camera. And of course, the whole principle can be scaled up. So there it is, just a quick demo uh, showing that you can uh, use ESP now to transmit to um, more than one receiver. And in this case, I'm transmitting one cam well two common filters or one big common filter uh, for pitch and for roll and I'm sending uh, them actually I send the pitch and the roll to both of them and I just pick I don't, I don't sort of split it and send one to one and one to the other I send both the whole structure goes to both of them then I split it at the receiver I take the pitch for one and the roll for the other and uh, each one of those has its own processor I suppose if you're clever enough you could um, use the second um, core on the ESP. You might not need to have two and then you dispense with um, the second one. But uh, it's, a, it's an interesting exercise anyway, trying to get it to work. And it's part of a slightly bigger project, just a, a feasibility if you like to see what uh, can be done uh, with this device. Thank you very much.